What's up amigos, Commander Jaime here today, and today we're going to do a Brant Gate standard deck profile for Overdress. So this is also known as the Battle Princesses or the Seref Snow deck, and, and it's also known as the Prison deck. So let's get right into it. Also, quick sponsorship note out to Next Level Gaming. And so if you guys are excited for the Overdress stuff that's coming out, definitely recommend checking out his shop. He has a lot of shirts for different nations such as Zorga, Magnolia, and many more if you're in different nations. So check it out and you get a 10% discount if you click on the link below in the description as well. So feel free to check it out and support the channel. So starting off with the winning image, so what does the deck even do? And so with Brant Gate in this variant, we're able to do basically able to remove resources from the opponent. And so what it does is the prison mechanic. And so we have this prison card over here that says when it's played, you can actually imprison units by other effects. So all these other units have the ability to imprison opponents regards so they get locked away in a sense <laughs> it's almost kind of like locked from back of the days but at the same time it removes them from the field puts them in a different uh, spot with this prison and then they have the option to either pay a counter blast or a soul blast to get those prison units out of that and give them back and so what you essentially do you're forcing the opponent to really debate on actually using a counter blast or a soul blast to get their units back out of jail and that eliminates not that, that really doesn't eliminate but it pushes them to like use resources more than the usual because a lot of the other decks don't have this kind of mechanic so this deck is geared to removing more of the resources also putting pressure because we have a vanguard over here that actually gates uh triple drive and so we actually gain abilities as the number of prisoned units accumulate over time so for example our vanguard over here during your turn when you have one or more this um any of the cards that are in prison this actually gets additional 10k and then if you had three or more, this gets an additional, additional drive track. And that's where you start having that pressure as a 23K standalone Vanguard with triple drive. That's actually pretty scary in Overdress right now. And then her second skill is where, you know, Vanguard Rearguard Circle, once per turn, you can actually choose one of your opponent's rearguards and imprison it. Um, two of your units, two of their units by imprisoning it with Pain and Counter Blast. And so that's where you could start actually imprisoning those units. And so that's very vital in that respect too. And so you as the player, your goal is to achieve triple drive, applying that pressure using Persona Ride and you start hitting 33k with your Vanguard. Your rearguard columns, depending on the units that you have, easily make the 23k mark. So you're applying those pressure columns too, where you're able to attack with a Vanguard first and not have to worry about one damage trigger actually ruining your attack pattern. Because most of the time you'll have 23k lines as rearguards and then if you Persona Ride, then you have 33k and so on and you can really make some big numbers at that point too. So onto the right deck, and so we have any starter that you can pick, it's run, uh, whatever you want. I pick Ruby Red just to keep the consistency of the art. <laughs> uh, with the great one though, when you write it onto Vanguard Circle, you're able to search up for one prison card, reveal it, and add it to your hand, and then shuffle your deck. So you can actually search uh, right here, Galaxy Central Prison Galactalus. So that way you're able to like play one or two in your deck and just be able to grab it immediately as soon as you write to great one. That helps with setting up that consistency of actually doing the imprisonment at that point. Most players play at one because you either search for it and if you actually hard draw it by accident, um, you just play it. It doesn't really matter, but it gives you an extra slot to be able to play a different unit. Some few players may play two just to be able to like, well, I want to make sure that I search for it every time and I deck then. Either way is fine. Um, for me, I play one copy. And so, you know, when you play the order though, you just have to be mindful of the cost. The cost is actually resting one of your units. And then of course you'd be able to soul charge three. So if you went first, you can actually rest your Vanguard because you're not gonna attack anyway. And then soul charge three. But if you're going second, be mindful of calling something like a rear guard and rest that unit. And that way your Vanguard can still attack. So that actually matters. And I just wanted to point that out too. Here as the grade two, uh, Rosette Pink. So when it's placed on Vanguard Circle, your opponent chooses one of the cards in their hand and imprisons in it. So this helps alleviate some of the issues where if they don't have a field, you can still imprison a card from their hand and you can start having at least that number uh, of imprisoned units actually accumulate at that point too. Plus when they actually get it out of jail, it all actually end up in their field. They can't get it back to their hand. So now you have a rear guard that you can constantly imprison if you really need to at that point. And then lastly, like I mentioned, Seraph Snow, she can imprison with one counter blast and then gets power and drive check. So that's your solid Vanguard. Now we're gonna cover the other cards that are able to imprison opponents' rearguards. And so again, you wanna play the, the maximum combos of Seraph Snow. 
One, it, it helps you in prison cards, but two, you want to personal ride as often as possible. This deck can really push with personal riding. It makes it really scary too, because your columns are very big and then you have triple drive on top of that. So if you do drive check the over trigger, it just becomes even more nuts <laughs> if you really think about it. We actually have the grade three as a backup over here for, you know, actually imprisoning units and it's the fair tiger. So when it's placed, or actually it's an act, my bad. Once per turn, you can actually soul blast one. This unit gets plus 2k until the end of the turn. Choose one of your opponent's front row rear guards and imprison it. And so this actually locks the ones in the front only. You'll notice that some of these will only be able to uh, lock from the front. And so when you use cards like Saref Snow, she can lock anything. So yeah, well, you can lock the back row if you really need to, if your opponent's only like calling one front row, for example. And so this number actually matters because 13 plus 2 is 15. And then you have an 8k booster, like a grade 1 you make the 23k mark. So that's why this guy's really good. He's also a Soul Blast one, which again, the prison card actually soul charges three. So your soul isn't really much of a um, a troublesome resource and you can easily accumulate that too as well, especially if you keep Persona riding. So it helps with that. Then we have Agra Rogue. It's one of the battle princesses. It's from the Genesis of the five great sets too. And so when it's actually, you know, continuous Vanguard, Regard, or actually Regard and Guardian Circle, if you have two or more of your opponent's cards that are imprisoned, then this unit gets plus 5k and 10k shield. So this becomes a 15k shield if you really needed to. Not only that, but it becomes a 15k beater. Again, behind, um, in front of an 8k, that makes 23. So that helps with making those numbers. But then also her second skill is that when she's placed onto rear guard, you can soul blast one and choose one of your opponent's front row rear guards and imprison it as well. So this is very similar to this guy. But it's a great two, it has intercept, it actually has more shield, it has more power. Well, same power if you boost it with an 8k, so it works out that way. Um, but it's just more flexible card in that sense, so I recommend playing 4 for sure. And then we have over here Chevy Stud, the great one. It reminds me of Transformers. <laughs> it's an act once per turn, so kind of blast one, so blast one, choose one of your opponent's rigors and imprison it in your prison. Then if you have three or more of your opponent's cards that are imprisoned, you draw a card. So this does two things you know the counter blast soul blast may seem a little heavy but really you're imprisoning a unit and drawing a card and most of the time i really have this as the, the booster if possible because you're able to get a card back so that way you still have a healthy hand and you're still making those 23k columns from the rear guard too as well and be good to go at that point onto the rest of the deck that you know these are cards that get benefits if you see imprisoned units these are also cards that help you with resources and stuff like that so for the first one the great two grapple external over here we're playing four copies of this card and this card has a simple yet effective skill is that during the battle that this unit attacks if your opponent's card is imprisoned by your prison this unit gets plus 5k so again it helps with that 23k mark so this is one of those throw down cards that you want to do um this is also great in the early game so if you want to have your vanguard imprison something with the great two or is that pink this actually goes live like that and so you can drop this guy down with the ak booster um and actually make that 23k column and so you hit with your vanguard if they get a damage trigger then you can still hit with that regard too so you apply early pressure and sometimes that early pressure actually helps with your opponent actually committing a card or two to the field so that way you can start like imprisoning it and get immediately that triple drive by your grade three turn two as well and so the grade one over here autonomic caution it kind of reminds me of something from like portal <laughs> uh so this card is really good too it's a rear guard guardian circle skull if you have one or more of your opponent's cards that are imprisoned, then you can actually get 2k attack power and then 5k shield. So this is the 10k shield for most of the time that I keep it in hand if possible because it's just additional shield to be able to survive your opponent's attacks. It can be a 10k booster, but most of the time it may be only useful when you really have like a 13k um, front row rear to boost like your vanguard or if you somehow have the other grade three Seraph Snow as a rear guard too, that helps in that regard to make 23K. But most of the time you're usually using the grade twos and the other grade three to make those 23K columns where the other grade ones are just sufficient with the AK boost. So I usually use this as shield mainly. Right here at the bottom, we have other cards that just kind of help us live and resources. So we have the four PG. You want to play the one that, you know, if you have two or less, you can basically just, or if you have one or less cards, then you don't have to discard kind of thing. And then of course we have Bobo Mine over here. It's actually really good in this deck too. I was playing this in Orphis, but it's also really good in Seraph Snow. So at the end of the turn, or at, at the end of the, the battle that this unit boosted, if you have an order zone that has a set order, which you will because of the prison card, you can put this into your soul and counter charge one. So that actually helps you to get your resources back and fuels the soul, gives you a counter blast to reuse and everything like that. Not only that, if you're in the prison mare, you can actually remove itself. So that way your prison 
opponent can only meet a certain criteria so they won't get as easily to that prison of three and you still call something to apply pressure for example so it kind of swoops away so the enemy can't like actually get rid of it or do something with it and then lastly over here is the blitz order so this is lightning barrier emergency deployment i almost see this reference as the among us card because <laughs> they look like a little among us guys uh this card i've been testing out recently and I've noticed that I've been accumulating a lot of snow and sometimes you wanna just drop a one card guard against a Vanguard of Vanguard and this kinda helps with that regard, especially if it's not being boosted in certain clans. Um, a good example will be Magnolia. And so, and then it also helps with building up shield more without using a PG2, so in that regard. So you can play this by Soul Blasting too. Choose one of your Vanguards and it gets plus 30k until the end of the battle. So it's pretty cool, it's one of those techs. You don't have to play it, you can play something else, but it's something that I wanted to point out at least for sure. So lastly, the trigger lineup. And so just looking at this, what we have at a disposal, you'll see a lot of decks play close to like the eight crit. So we are also playing eight crit. We're playing the four heal, we're playing the over trigger and then three of the front. So one of the things that, you know, I've seen people play is the draw triggers instead of the front. Uh, if one of the things that we're moving forward, we'll be getting uh, front triggers that actually get more power like shield wise. I think the front triggers actually help with this deck's winning image because you're using your other cards to gain resources and to maintain uh, resources as well. And you're getting resources um, accumulating because you go triple drive, for example. So I think it's safe to go to front triggers and apply additional pressure. So all of your units will get the additional 10k and apply more pressure. Most of the time you're going to attack with the Vanguard first anyway. So then that helps with that regard with pushing to that 33k mark much more easily with your rigor columns. And so that's why I felt like this was pretty useful. Plus the 15k shield it's much more better than the draw trigger um but you know you can make arguments with the draw trigger too so either way is fine but i feel like moving forward if we get more crits and then we get the, the better front triggers i think that this lineup's going to change a little bit and we'll see how it ends up changing and then the over trigger what it does for brant gate is that you know with the additional effect is that it doubles the attack and critical of all your front row units until the end of the turn so if you like for example this was your second or third drive check and you already drove check like a crit trigger and you put it on your vanguard um it's gonna double the critical as well so you can go for crit potentially and then if you did like you know another crit trigger on the second drive and then did this on the fourth it'll go to crit three to crit six <laughs> uh or you can you know distribute the the triggers on your regards and they get the additional uh crit at that point or crits depending on how many crits they have uh the power is double which is significant especially since you're getting like triggers beforehand or you're making those numbers so you can start pushing 40 to 50, 60, 80K, that's just depending on how much triggers you drove track and how much of the power columns that you make. So the over trigger helps really well offensively at that point. And you can actually kind of steal a win from that because if your opponent wasn't expecting to have some many high critical attacks still coming from that because they're, you got to stop four, uh, three attacks. And if they're like at high damage, they're going to die. <laughs> so yeah, now until some quick combos. Uh, so like I mentioned, like when you go to your grade two turn, you're able to imprison one of your opponent's cards from hand. I'm using Tetra Drive as a, an example as uh, fodder. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, you have one unit that is imprisoned now. And so cards like over here, Grapple External would actually get their skills off. So it gets plus 5k and then you can drop down an 8k booster, such as a Shovel Stud and actually make that 23k line. So then that way you can actually attack with a Vanguard for 10k to their 1k or their 10k Vanguard, depending on what grade they are. If they get a trigger, they'll be 18k or 20k, but you're still able to hit if that's the case and you don't get a trigger too. So you're still able to apply two pressure attacks on your grade two turn while you're imprisoning something as well. Now go into your grade three turn, let's say you are able to write to ref snow, then you're able to imprison one of the units with right here, Agra Rogue, and then also using her skill to kind of last one to also imprison two units. So you have three units that are in prison right here, so you're mid requirement. So you can start uh, forming this regard column as a 23k column too, like in this example as the booster, I'm using bubble mine as well. So then your first attack will be the vanguard you do your triple drive you get 10k as well so this is a 23k line um and then of course you get attack with 23 and then 23 and then at the end of the battle that this unit boosted you can use cards like bubble mine to go into soul and then counter charge one and so in this example is that you use one kind of less now you refund it you use one soul now you refund it with bubble mine and so you're pretty much good to go and then if they use their resources to get these units back onto the board then you can just re-prison them again and that's the deck profile amigo so it's a pretty straightforward deck as long as you start getting the hang of the imprisoning and have to imprison units everything else is pretty straightforward it's just making numbers making sure your resources are well managed 
and just keep applying pressure until you actually win at that point. And then your opponent may run out of resources. Um, so for example, you know, a deck against like Zorga, for example, wants to use their counterblast for their order that is grief, despair, and rejection. However, if they're using counterblast to get their units back, now they have less counterblast to use grief, despair, and rejection multiple times in a game. And sometimes those games can be grindy and then for a deck like that, it can run out of counter blast uh, resources in that respect. And then of course, the soul for that deck isn't that great too. So it's hard for them to do the soul. And that's why they use cards like Hendrina to also be able to use their orders that use soul, for example. And so depending on the deck that you're already facing, you may have a really big advantage. And then some decks, it might hurt them, but they're able to work with what they got. But still, this deck actually applies pressure. So we're still getting more support. I know that we're getting a card that is able to also imprison from the hand additionally outside of your Vanguard, right? So that's very welcome, <laughs> especially if you're facing a deck that just can like not call any regards or they just decide not to call regards just to give you a hard time. So that way you're, you know, when you write to grade three, you want to get that triple drive and it makes sense at that point too. So I really enjoy this deck. It gives you a sense of like uh, resource management and attrition at that point too. And you can remove cards from your opponent too, in a sense too, without being like super overpowered with lock back with lean joker, for example, days. And so I really recommend this deck too. And then there's going to be another deck profile coming soon for overdress as well. So keep on the eye for that. And so if you like this video, give it a like down below. Comment down below. Is there something that you would tweak or some things that you've seen that other players have done? Or maybe you just, you know, have a different experience. So let me know in the comments below. And then of course, you know, share it with some people that like this deck or like overdress in general. And then of course, subscribe. So till next time, amigos. Bye.